gave up back into the game. Griffin was a beast again. Good to see Lytton getting game time. But the step up when Mint was on the pitch was so noticeable. Yeah, particularly when he came back. Definitely agree. Pitch. Yeah, his second spell, it was um, up to full year, mate. Up to up to yeah. eleven, up to eleven in the year, mate potential. <laughs> and uh, finally, on the fan views, Phil Nadin, the original beast from the east, said, "Missed the first half thanks to work. The second half started well for Witness, getting a try back, followed up with con- with the con- conversion. He's written conversation, which has confused <laughs> me." Auto-correct, gone mad. <laughs> uh, Hull struck back with three tries in quick succession, hit Witness hard. Witness kept pushing, and that was rewarded with another try. But Josh Griffin and Jamie Shaw put the game to bed. There were lucky decisions for both sides, especially the possible simbin for FC and a loose ball try for Witness. So, as we said, uh, you we both watched this one. Uh, what did you make on it overall? Well, I was pleased that Witness showed so much fight. I think it was good to see um, a couple of the younger players doing themselves no harm. Both Chapel House and Owen Farnworth, as, like, you know, as the main kind of props in, in this performance, um, I think did, did a, a passable job for the most part against international calibre in Scott Taylor and um, and a really good player in, in Paya and Green and an up-and-comer like Matongo as well. He didn't look the best of the young players, even though in this of the young forwards, even though he scored his first try. It was a nice. It was a, that was all. It was a lovely happened. try, but it was yeah. um, he yeah, he didn't really stand out much up until that point. There was sort of oh, or, or beyond that, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but well, the first thing I wrote down with this, and uh, Sarah turned the radio down, was uh, Jake Connor Supernob. <laughs> he was back to his full just yapping or anything oh give it a, we get it we get it you're a twat just come on any any they, we, they, they could have been spared it by him being on the bench but Carlos Tumafave pulling up lame in the uh in the warm-up meant that Connor got the go and uh got to get his got to get his chin wagging as he always does um look it it was the losing players to injury I mean, but they lost experienced players. And, and losing them, mid, as, as you always say, losing them mid-game is, is what hurts you. And so it's not only the players they had out before the game, it's the ones they lost during the game because you had uh, Christine snapped her bicep. Exactly. One in each half, weren't they? Early in each half. So it kind of like team talk goes out the window and you can see the resignation on Bet's face. And he just didn't have... it didn't have anything else to throw at the game. So you've got to be... So you've got to be a little bit impressed by the fact that they're a bit um, they're a bit like the Monty even got it to a point where they were ahead. Yeah. After 50 minutes, they're a the bit game. like the Monty Python Black Knight, aren't they? They, you know, another limb gets chopped off, and they're like, "Yeah, come on, <laughs> come on, we'll have it, we'll have it." They just keep going. And that is, you know, impressive how resolute they are. And I think it will, over the long run, do them some good because they've shown that they've got all that depth to fall back on, to to still keep them relatively competitive. They're not getting the results, but they're still hanging in there. And as you said, they were ahead for a chunk of the game and they were looking spicy for quite a bit of it. So I don't think they're done badly. And I think, you know, obviously those two injuries during the game really did kill them off because it just because it reduces your bench options and the amount you can use your rotation. Yeah. And especially when you're bringing in kids that, you know, I think it was Farnworth's first game of the season, only a second game, I think, in the first, second or third game in the first team. And physically, he didn't look ready to do long minutes. So, you know, he worked as hard as he could. Um, there's something wrong with Greg Burke. He doesn't seem inspired enough for me. I, I've always rated his ability. Um, he needs to apply himself more for this witness. Like maybe he's playing injured because I'm guessing some of these people are. One of the players who I think is applying himself really well and got a try, which I think he richly deserved given the amount of tackles he's been putting on his undersized body is Sam Wilde um, so I'm glad he got his try for witness but you, it's just a, an air of resignation and feeling sorry for witness for Hull FC Josh Griffin just keeps keeps on having Banging his best over. game in a Hull FC shirt every, every week it's it incremental every game, week yeah. it's just better and better and he's someone who's you'd have to be wait well, definitely be in dream team conversations at the moment I think he's edging his way towards an England conversation uh, well, it's certainly be in the conversation because, like, his main competition is Percival, who st- still has the same flaws. The the you know they're massively outweighed by his incredible skill and ability, but size, strength, defensive reads are still not quite there. So if Griffin can demonstrate better defence, 
then that then he's got a, a shout in there ahead of him because that that's really it other than Bateman um but he's not really a center we know and yeah. uh yeah um they were my standout sort of people and moments really uh i, I did quite like the uh, the roy orbison try it was a really leg power that came across in this one it was just getting nice and low and just really pushing across in the legs and that's a really good sort of coaching point is you know the amount of power you can get just by driving your legs really into His that. first try yeah the one where he just he yeah. just properly just bollocked over well, it's his second try. I was um, impressed by just the simple fact of how much space he had. Yeah. Uh, you know, Witness managed to create some stuff there, so that, that was good for them. But no, um, Houghton has been mentioned. I thought he was excellent when he came back onto the field. And I thought Kelly was just a threat constantly. So Again, um, so... as I said about him before, he just he's drifting across and it's the same that Carlos does to an extent as well. He's just drifting across the line, just opens up that extra bit of space which allows him to I think the pressure's hit. taken off when Connor's in the side because Connor can you know sometimes get involved in the kicking game, sometimes get involved in the the play call, like setting up the plays and, and doing the creativity. And you always have so to it watch kind him, of don't you? And he frees Kelly yeah. up a little bit because there's more he gets a bit more space because like you say people are looking elsewhere. But uh, one thing we do need to touch on as well that was good to see was Jody Cunningham uh, being an upgrade on John Wells at half time. Um well, or... yeah, but JJB Yes. So, you know. But she actually yeah, was very very clear, very I'm good. not sure I'm not sure how to put the, I'm not sure women's... how to put the uh, subtitles on my iPad so I didn't I just missed <laughs> all the JJB stuff as usual. Yorkshire subtitles. Um okay. So that's that game, um, as far as that's concerned. We'll roll through the stats, and I'm sure we're going to hear some of the names we've already discussed. Hull FC gave up more errors and more penalties, which will have helped keep their hosts in the game for some time, but more metres, a huge 2.2 metres per carry, better average gain, along with 11 breaks to two and 5.7% better tackle success, all underpinned what ended up a comfortable win for the Hull side. Now, I nearly wrote the black and whites of Hull, but then I thought, no, it's the Cerise and... Cerise. It was it was quite you know it's quite a standout kit, wasn't it? You wouldn't lose that one on a on a dark night. I'm still looking, uh, thinking we need to get a crowdfunding together to get Joshua's granddad that sh- that shirt for his uh, next birthday because I'm sure uh, Mr. Scatter would love uh, rocking up in that to a to an away game. Definitely. Okay, individually, Josh Griffin. We've talked about him. The only thing he did wrong in this game was injure himself celebrating his second try. He had two tries, nine tackle balls, 228 metres, four clean breaks. Over on the other side of the pitch, Barita Faremo, a try, a try assist, which that kick inside was quite a, a neat play by him on the run. Yeah. Five tackle balls, 129 metres, three clean breaks. Albert Kelly, a try assist, 122 metres, two clean breaks. For Tuli Talanoa, one try and 110 Meters um, for the losing witness side. Tom Alberson had two tries. Jay Chapel Howe, 108 meters. Ryan Ince, 111 meters, and Reese Hambry, 113 meters. So scraping into the uh, into the stats roundup there. Okay, we move on to uh, Friday's game. Don't fall asleep, everyone. We'll try and not talk about the first 70 <laughs> minutes too much. It was the just Leeds the mem- just eight. the memory of it just exhausts me. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> The Leeds Rhinos 8, the Wigan Warriors 9, the comeback Kings right again in front of 12,225. Ben Thaler was the man with the whistle. Uh, do you want to start the fan review? Yep, so POB 1976, 8 nil down with 10 minutes to go. Wigan did what they do best. Should have been a draw, but Myler rushed his attempted drop goal. Uh, St David said the best you can say about the game, that game was it was tight and the kits were nice. Clark took <laughs> bollocks all match and he was... but. He was right about Bateman, who was immense. Great dropped goal by the future Catalan fullback. Carsten, as a neutral fan, the first 70 minutes were just boring and the last 10 were also somehow boring. Interesting take. Leeds tried to win it with defence and Wigan didn't invest enough. Hashtag boring, hashtag just boring, hashtag not enough beer. Well, it is expensive out in Switzerland. So Dr. Uh, Bob... doesn't surprise me, <laughs> getting a beer over there. Doc, Dr. Bob Phillips, I've never been. Is it nice? It's, I only, nice only hear from colleagues, because I've never been, but every time ah. someone goes from work, they, they the first thing you can guarantee is, it cost me eight quid for a beer. <laughs> Dr. Bob Phillips says, Wigan rattled the Rhinos in a now standard second half turbo boost for the pie eaters, and there needs to be an even greater leap up in leadership and game management by the Rhinos' senior players. Still, at least we're the current champions. 
Oh, I wonder if that's a digger anyway. Mitchell Darts said, horrible, horrifying spectacle on Friday the 13th. Coincidence? I think not. Cutthroat Jake said, well, that was apparently one of the top matchups in Super League. Both teams were not so much golden <laughs> edge as they were golden shower. <laughs> top marks. <laughs> Wigan deserved to win. They scored more points, but I can't help think the ultimate loser was Rugby League. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, that is harsh, but very, very fair. Alfie Garnett said, uh, what a balmy game. John Hamilton said, does that count as one for the purists? Definitely some poor game management in the final quarter, but Leeds had decent chances to score earlier than that and couldn't finish. The match could have been da- done after Pal Simbin. The result clearly went a huge amount to both teams, so hopefully galvanises leads a bit. Grits teeth. Tomkins' drop goal was excellent. I think that's more one for the sadists than one for the purists. Watching that <laughs> one again. Certainly it's not one I even ventured near the highlights of. I think. One... Do you know what? When I watched it back when I got home, it was I was still excited watching the last 10 minutes, even though I knew what was going to happen. Because part of me driving home didn't believe that that was what was going to happen still. So, uh, so yeah. Okay, we have another... So I still enjoyed it, watching it back, even if even if other people <laughs> might not have enjoyed it. <laughs> another uh, Leeds fan, Rich Wilkinson, said, gutted that the Rhinos didn't get the win. We were the best team for most of the game. However, game management turned into stopping playing and we got caught by a tough Wigan team with nothing to lose and there's always a dangerous beast to face. Mark Fort Leeds fitness let them down but I believe we didn't take our chances especially early in the second half when we blew clean cut chances well done pies and Phil Nadin we finished with he said this looked a tough and hard hitting game for both sides not the most exciting game for the majority of it but the last 15-20 minutes was a good battle especially for Leeds to protect their 8 point lead but Wigan came back and decided to eventually spoil my super brew with Tompkins doing a fairly good snide impression to the to clinch the points it ended on a nail biting finish a good watch to the end at the end for the neutral right let's settle this conversation first Tompkins drop goal in this game was better than Snades even though Snades was from halfway because this was out wide it was it was it reminded me of that Matty Smith one from a few years ago it wasn't quite as skillful not Matty Smith um Pat Richards, Pat Richards St. Helens, the one yeah, I meant. That, that, ultimately didn't mean anything, but this one meant a lot. Yeah, that that one was probably the best one of, of, of that type, if we could class them as a genre of um, goals from outside. But that was oh, yeah. definitely, Pat Richards the, is the best. Was definitely the Pat Richards one. But this, I mean, the skill and the vision to execute that is just yeah, outstanding. Yeah, I think no one was really expecting it, and Leeds were, Leeds were a bit gassed. I don't think half the I Wigan team were expecting it, yet alone Leeds. Well, I think it was uh, one of the players from the other side of the pitch. So it was either Gildar or Burgess or one of them said as soon as he kicked it, it was Burgess because Gildar said as soon as he kicked it, I knew he'd scored it. But Burgess, I think, said as soon as he went to kick it, I shouted no because I thought, <laughs> what's he doing kicking it from there? It was. It might have been Bateman. It was someone anyway said that and I thought that was really funny. Uh, and then it went over. That was That was the most exceptional moment in the whole game beyond the streaker um, right on the half-time whistle. Now, now on TV, we didn't he... get any of this streaker, so you'll have to enlighten us here. Well, he ran out of the um, of the open end, nominally the away end, and uh, fully nude, um, basically got on the pitch, was running around in about the around the 20-metre the line for about 30 seconds, kind of waving his arms up and down in the air to get the crowd to cheer whilst uh, other things waved up and down in the air <laughs> below and then um, and then he decided to run nearer to the players everyone just didn't give any shits about him being there I have, um, I have never understood why anyone would bother to streak at, a, at any sporting fixture I just don't under- hey the thinking why what you know the, the preparation you need as much as anything else you've got to have an understanding <laughs> friend who is going to take your clothes keys wallet phone and not nick them do you not think most of them have been dared or put up to it by these understanding <sighs> friends so these people are more than willing to to get a hold of this uh possibly of this stuff or you've left everything at home because you're not planning <laughs> on on needing it because you've got a, a a bed at her majesty's pleasure for you, the put, evening, you put the key on un- yeah put the key under the flower pot and uh, just taken a 20 rolled up somewhere but um <laughs> i've just Take an old trench coat and just leave it behind i've just never i've never understood it and then 
Yeah, and as much as anything else, you're spoiling any future event because you're going to get quite a significant ban for something like that. You're going to be uh, off, off, off get with a the police. Serious police.